this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes and today's project is going to be a single color ice dye in the color Peony. I'm going to be making a spiral for this project. So I smooth out as many wrinkles as I can and then decide where I want the center of my spiral to be. I'm making a center spiral on this one. So I give that area a little pinch and then I'm using a microwave splatter guard and a hemostat to create my spiral. And this is how I make them. The splatter guard is no longer available for purchase. You can find splatter guards, but not this particular model. It is the Nordic Wear Deluxe model. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about it because you can't get it, but if you find one, buy it because they've been discontinued. And I said this in my last video, but if you guys wanna do a writing campaign, if enough of us write in, maybe they will reconsider and put them back on the market. In the meantime, you're gonna to have to find yourself some type of a tool if you wanna do it like me. All right, now I like to secure my spirals with rubber bands. I find them to just be quick and easy, but you can do whatever makes you happy. If you like to use kite string or sinew, go for it. These are my favorite rubber bands in the color purple, and you will find links down below in the description box for these rubber bands and everything else that I use for tie-dye, so I recommend that you check that out. What I'm doing right now is tightening up my spiral. So when you use a splatter guard or some other type of tool, it can only go so far on the t-shirt. Then you're left with all these loose tails sticking out of the rubber bands. And it's not very tight, so if you try to pick it up, it can fall apart on you. So while I'm tightening it up, I'm working on those pleats. So I work on the pleats all the way down to the end of the shirt, and then I tuck them into the nearest rubber band and I will go around and around doing this until I feel like I have a nice tight spiral. And this one is looking pretty good if you ask me. This project is going to be an ice dye, so I need to create some type of an ice barrier and for this one, I'm using the silicone cake molds. I love these things. You'll find a link down below in the description box. I love them because they're reusable. They don't work for every single project, but they work great for spirals. And sometimes they're a little bit too big for the project, so I just secure it with a um, paper clip that I got from the dollar store. Using a washable marker, I mark out my pattern. Now this is not a necessary step, but I like to do it. A lot of times I will fold up my spirals and I'll set them aside. This helps me remember what my plan was for the shirt. So now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And like I said, this is a single color in the shade Peony. Now it is pronounced Peony, P-A-N-E. I have been hearing some of you, <clears throat> Greg, call it Peony. That's not how you say it. At least I'm almost positive it's peony. I guess it could depend on where you are in the world or even from the west coast to east coast, but it is peony. Now peony in my experience is not a heavy saturator, so I'm going to be adding the dye pretty thick. I have no intentions of flipping the shirt over. Since I'm swatching it out, I just want to let it do its thing. I'm applying the dye with a spoon that I got from Jen and John over at Shop Boredom with Jen. So if you want to get yourself some of these spoons and the tool that I'm using to tap it with is a pleating tool, you want to go to www.shopboredomwithjen. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and I'm focusing primarily on the areas that have the dye because the shirt's already been pre-soaked. And then I add my ice, and I'm using my Nugget Ice, my Frigidaire Nugget Ice Machine Ice. If you get this machine, make sure you get the next gen. They call it the Gallery. I love this machine. 
And if you noticed, I added the ice to the white areas first. That way I didn't knock any of the dye into the white area. Then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. And I let this project batch for the full 48 hours. I get asked quite a bit about these types of projects where you see it's totally different looking on the back and I didn't flip it, I don't talk about it. So what happens is when you use a, a dye color that has a T on it, so peony has a T next to it and that stands for turquoise. This is an ice dye. So as the ice melts and splits all of that dye down, it goes into its component color, which is turquoise. So because I don't flip it over and I don't add more dye to the back or do anything like that, you just get to see what this color is doing. And it makes a really beautiful turquoise color. So that is where the blue comes from. Okay, now for the rinse out, you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to remove any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. And when you're trying to protect white, really rinse your white areas out well. Get all of that soda ash out of there. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Milsoft. And Milsoft is a professional fabric softener. Then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our single color ice dye in the shade Peony after it's been washed and dried and the shirt turned out beautiful. It's a nice looking spiral. The white space stayed white. The colors are nice and vibrant, really beautiful. So remember when I was talking in the rinse out about the blue and where did that come from? Well, you can see now when it's all opened up and washed and dried, how it works out. I didn't flip it over, so it's not a lot of oversaturation. The color has remained able to breathe and show itself. So peony, if you were to do it in a liquid, is more of a lavender color. But when you're going to ice dye with it, this is what you can expect. Some really beautiful magenta color and then a really beautiful turquoise baby blue. Super pretty. In the close-up shots where you see the lavender color, that is, that is peony. If you look on Dharma's um, dye list and you look at their little picture swatch, it looks like a pinkish lavender color see right there that is peony the rest of the magic is just coming from the ice dyeing and it's just super beautiful this is my first time using it like this so i learned a whole lot about it and if you guys have not made yourself these single color ice dyes yet i definitely recommend it because it's such a good way to learn about your dye Right here is the liquid swatch against the ice dye. That way you can see what both methods are capable of, and I like them both. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.